Welcome to Supply Chain Horizons, a video podcast series that looks at crucial issues facing global supply chain teams. I'm Chris Russell, and I would like to share with you some interesting and thoughtful conversations that I've had with talented supply chain professionals in many industries around the world. As I travel around and speak to supply chain managers, planners, senior executives, it's clear that there's some confusion regarding the relationship between network design and inventory optimization, two disciplines that are closely related in some ways, but ultimately play very different roles in the modern supply chain. Today, we are going to hopefully clear all that up with help from a very special guest, inventory optimization pioneer and supply chain guru, Dr. Sean Willems. Sean. Hey, Chris. So when you give us 50 words or less on who you are and what you do. I'm an associate professor at Boston University, is uh, working in the area of inventory optimization and supply chain design. And I'm also the chief scientist at Legility, where we have implemented uh, this, you know, this software in practice. I wanted to talk to you today about network design vis-a-vis multi-echelon inventory optimization. So when I'm out talking to companies, I run into different players who seem to be confused about what the differences between network design and inventory optimization are. They seem to be sort of similar but different. What's your take on that? Just like you, I run into that confusion all the time. And it's it's actually really quite natural because network design and inventory optimization, they do share similarities. I mean, they're, they're two different things, and we're going to get to that, but, but they, there are similarities. If we start with the similarities, they both look at a similar problem domain. They're looking at global supply chains, you know, looking at multiple locations, multiple geographies. So the overall scope of the two models are the same. They both address strategic problems in the supply chain, so they both have that ability. Most importantly, they can have the same set of users, which are this, the corporate supply chain center of excellence. That's the kind of group that's going to use a network design tool. That's also the, the group that can do more strategic inventory optimization work. So you've got the same group looking in the same problem domain. They have similar user interfaces, you know, looking at a network representation of the supply chain, and they're both focused with cost optimization. So sort of 50,000-foot level, they share real similarity, and that leads to confusion. You know, when I was working with network design back in the 1990s, the kind of problems we were solving were very distribution intensive. They were, where do we put the warehouses? You know, what are the modes of transportation? So it almost seems to me like these sets of modeling solutions have different origins? Most definitely. I mean, that's spot on. It, you know, network design really originated in the 1960s to solve, as you say, you know, distribution facility design problems. So it's looking at things like where should manufacturing plants be located, where should distribution centers be located, say what transportation route should be employed in the network to, to marry up the manufacturing plants with the distribution centers and then the customer demand locations. Network design really has existed for quite some time. It's also important to grasp that while these are important problems, they're solved far less frequently than inventory optimization problems. You know, you're not going to optimize your entire distribution network every quarter, let alone every year. You know, you're going to do that something like every two years, every three, maybe even every five years, depending on the clock speed of your industry. It's also very much a fact that network design problems, that their data is much more aggregated than in inventory optimization. Because we're solving this, which plants should we use, where should those plants be located, which distribution centers, where should they be located, we're not going to model things at the individual stock keeping unit at individual levels, right, which is what inventory optimization does. They're not even actually going to model at the product family level. What Network design models do is they aggregate up to the product category level. So, you know, an example I like to think of is if we were thinking of like a a men's razor, they're not going to look at a men's razor at a location. They're going to look at all men's shaving products in North America. If they're looking at a women's razor at a specific location, that's far too detailed. They'd look at women's shaving products in North America. While there might be hundreds of SKUs that aggregate up to that super quantity, 
they're using that much more aggregated quantity. And in the context of network design, that's perfectly appropriate because what we're looking at is aggregate flows into and out of facilities. So we don't need to be at the sort of individual detail level, but that really aggregate level would be far too coarse for inventory optimization. That rings true to me because I remember when we were doing this, we would aggregate not only the product level, but also the customer level, right? Yeah, channels. exactly. We aggregate channels. You know, we'd sort of lasso these big piles of demand. And we'd also do it in pretty big time buckets across the horizon, you know, years or quarters. Exactly. I mean, it, it's going to be at best quarterly, you know, typically be annually. And as you say, since, since you're making these macro decisions of, you know, are, are facilities being kept open or not? Are, you know, is this particular DC being used to serve this geography? That's not something that anyone's going to change monthly, you know. So it, it actually does make sense for it to be this aggregate. And so that's why they do it that way. That would sort of keep you from going into a lot of segmentation analysis on the at the inventory side. How do they treat inventory within that network design model in your experience? Inventory isn't isn't a decision variable in network design. In simple terms, inventory is not optimized. There can be constraints on the amount of inventory at a location, just like there can be constraints on a factory's capacity. So you can set these sort of aggregate limits on the inventory that's in a distribution center, but that's not the same as optimizing. And given that the sort of we're looking at this very aggregate level that network design is doing, we're not limiting individual SKUs, we're limiting really the bulk inflow and outflow uh, from facilities. It's really optimizing the network with very much sort of a flow-in, flow-out perspective. Inventory is just flowing through the network at this quarterly level. You know, that doesn't let us optimize inventory, but it does allow us to account for it in the sense of the facilities are producing product on a quarterly basis, you know, sending it through the network, we have to make sure that we don't grossly violate a distribution center's capacity. So we need that sort of constraint, but that's definitely not the same as optimizing inventory levels. So what is uh, MEIO, multi-echelon inventory optimization? How is that different? Yeah, so you know, MEIO, I feel old saying this now, but you know, really originated in the 1990s, so, so significantly later than network design. And it originated in the 1990s to optimize inventory targets across the supply chain. So we have to model the inventory at the SKU location level, not at the facility level, but at a level far more detailed than that. Actually, the locations in the facility that can hold inventory. So this is a far lower level of detail. We also have to explicitly consider all the variabilities that exist in the supply chain, variability in supply, in schedule attainment, and demand across the entire supply chain. I should have mentioned earlier that you know, this is not something that network design does. You know, network design very much has a deterministic view of, of the times in the supply chain, whereas here we have to explicitly account for variability. We also have to take into account seasonality and forecast bias and sort of all the things that make real-life inventory management difficult because we're looking at this network and saying, you know, exactly how much inventory has to be at every location for every item in the supply chain. So that's a far more detailed analysis. It goes down to more of the tactical planning level as well. So you're synced with the, the cadence of the supply chain planning. Exactly. And I think this starts to show then the similarity and the difference between I.O. And, and network design. The two areas can both occupy the same strategic space. And I think this sort of goes back to your earlier comment, why is there confusion? Well, you know, both of these models can be used at a very high level if you want. So you can use inventory optimization solution to understand what, what are the inventory ramifications at different distribution centers. But you can also use it at a much more detailed level, and this is, of course, where it really adds its value, to drive the inventory targets in a planning system. As you say, that's at a much more operational, tactical level, which is far more detailed than what a network design tool is capable of. That is unique to I.O., its ability to take this variability information across the supply chain and optimize inventory targets. 
So is there some basic difference in the mathematical approach here since we're talking about modeling general networks? Yeah, the, the underlying math is, is quite different. In, in network design, you know, as a general statement, they're relying on integer linear programming, which is a, you know, a very sort of well-established area of, of operations research modeling, uh, which network design has certainly made a lot of advances in. When we look at inventory optimization, we're looking at stochastic nonlinear programming. So this is sort of a different class of models, and this is why one model can't do everything. The underlying math limits what each one can do. The nice thing in in these network design models is they can model these you know very big problems of turning on and off facilities, and that's what these integer constraints are capturing but they can't capture the detailed SKU location information, which is what is required in these nonlinear stochastic solvers. So what's different about the underlying business workflow when you're talking about implementing or deploying network design and inventory optimization? I think there's, there's quite a bit. You know, in this supply chain center of excellence area, there's an analyst doing some sort of strategic analysis. And those analysts are very, very smart. They're very, very flexible. They, uh, they often sort of massage the data outside of systems and you know, do all sorts of things. But once we move towards real inventory optimization, the center of excellence isn't going to be setting those targets. You know, we have to get the targets in the hands of planners. We need a real workflow for planners. That means that we have to model all the SKUs that a planner sees, fast-moving SKUs, slow-moving SKUs, sort of sadly not moving SKUs, you know, sort of like <laughs> everything that they have is required. That really means we need significant workflow enhancements. We need you know, usability of software that, that lets planners interact with the solution, not just these sort of expert analysts. Yeah, sure. I've seen the analysts who use the software leave and then no one really knows what to do because uh, the application translate well to the tactical level, to the planner level, where it's sticky. Yep. With network design, you know, that, that's very much a world where you're going to have a couple users that are very smart people using it offline. And then in, when you're really setting inventory optimization targets across the supply chain, there's no way those people could do it. There's something wrong with that, but they don't know the business. We have to get it into the hands of planners to have them understand the solution, implement the solution. At the end of the day, it sounds like network design and inventory optimization each have their place in the world. What would be your summary of where they live and how they're complementary? The sort of classic network design situation is, you know, you're in some greenfield situation where you're now looking to locate new facilities, either new manufacturing facilities, new distribution facilities, or both. Well, that is the absolute sweet spot of network design. That's what it was built for. If the facilities are already there, and what you're really looking to do is tweaking the design of your network, then it, I think it depends which of these two products is the right one for you. Um, because at this point, if you already have the network, the problem I like to call that is not so much network design, but is supply chain configuration where what we're now doing is, is making some changes to the network, but it's not like we're going to wholesale move facilities. And in that case, network design, inventory optimization could each play a role, but the importance of each depends on what the decision maker cares about. So if you're really focused on inventory, then inventory optimization is going to be the right one to use. If you're really focused on, say, transportation costs or modeling of different you know, freight lanes, then network design should be what you use. If you're going sort of lower than that now and you're saying, you know, we're really looking to feed optimal targets to your planning system, then of course inventory optimization is a no-brainer. And there still is sort of one more middle ground. Maybe if you're looking to optimize inventory levels in a more strategic way, just then inventory optimization fits. But, but in this setting, you know, as you said at the start, these each have their place, and it really just depends on the decision layer where you are. And you might have both, right? Exactly. I mean, you know, a specific example I can think of, there was a greenfield supply chain being set up, so they used network design to set up the initial locations, and then we built actually a much more detailed inventory analysis of the distribution centers to see if we would actually run out of capacity in those DCs. And if you did 
then it turned out that we needed to, in effect, force that distribution center to hold more inventory in the network design model. That could then change the solution, make another location be better, because there's fixed costs with increasing capacity at distribution centers. So there can definitely be be points in time when there's uh, iteration that benefits the user. It depends on how much fidelity they need in their answer regarding their network design. All right. This has been very elucidating. I enjoyed the conversation, so it's good to sort of try to clear up some of this confusion that exists. All right. Thank you, Sean. So, my friends, what are our takeaways from this discussion? Well, we continue to find in our supply chain community some confusion between network design and multi-echelon inventory optimization. But while multi-echelon inventory optimization and network design exist in a similar solution space, each addresses a unique supply chain challenge. If your challenge is aggregate flows, sourcing, facility location, then network design may be appropriate. If your challenge is to directly address inventory across all tiers of your supply chain to drive your business, then multi-echelon inventory optimization is uniquely suited for this. And finally, there's no reason why aggregate network design solutions cannot be deployed in a complementary planning process with multi-echelon inventory optimization, using the strengths of each appropriately to drive further supply chain maturity and competitiveness. Supply Chain Horizons is sponsored by Legility. We also invite you to connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Supply Chain Horizons.